I always think with any nonlinear editing system, all you really need to know to get up and running with visual effects is how to put them on, how to take them off, and how to get to the settings, and perhaps how to change the order in which they're applied. So let's just get that far with our effects today. First of all, let's say I want to do a little bit of color correction on this shot here. So I'm going to go to my effects list, and I'm going to look for my video filters, and under this I've got a separate category called color correction. And I think I'm going to put the three-way color correction on here, so I'm going to drag and drop this onto the visual part of the clip. Of course, all of a sudden, nothing's going to happen. But if I double click on the settings for that effect in my information panel straight away, let's just move this up a bit. There we are. I can see my settings. Now, Edius uses the recorder monitor to show you the effects that you're applying. And of course, I'm a little bit short on screen space here, but here I've got my shadow, mid-tone and high tone adjustments. So maybe I can give a bit of an orange tint to the sky there and I can adjust the saturation of the highlights and maybe drop the contrast a bit and here I can limit the color correction so I can say I only want to apply color correction to colors within a certain range this is secondary color correction or I can do it based on an amount of saturation or an amount of brightness an amount of luminous now this is perhaps not the best clip to do it but if I just set these to default this is perhaps not perfectly white balanced based on the color of his shirt but if I click on the color picker, let's see if I can get this to move off screen a bit. I can click on white and then click on something white in the picture. Click on something gray or black. Maybe I can probably get away with his hair there a little bit and gray, maybe a jacket. I can get Edius to automatically adjust the color. These can be pretty subtle adjustments, but it's sometimes the best way to just get a clean image. Of course, each of the effects that you apply in Edius will have their own settings and controls, but the idea is to get in there and start playing. I've got preview options here. Maybe if I go again for that orange sky, you can see because of my limiting, I'm losing some parts of the sky. I just turn that off. And because I've turned on this preview mode, I can toggle different parts of the screen to see the application of the effect. And also, just like the layouter, I've got a keyframing control at the bottom of the window, which is exactly the same design as the one that you'll find in the Edius layouter, but with different options, of course. This is the greys, the blacks, and the whites, and so on. I can reset the default if I like for each of these settings or for the entire effect. But if I'm happy with that, maybe I will stick with that. I can click OK, and there is my effect. I might also apply another effect, so let's have a look. Perhaps I'll also apply something like a soft focus, give this a really arty look. So I'm going to drag and drop that on. That kind of works. If I double click, I'll get the settings for this. I can set the radius. I can set how much blurring is applied. Maybe I'll put some brightness on, a little bit of a fogging effect. That can be pretty useful. Yeah, well, something like that, I guess, and click OK. Now sometimes, but not always, the order in which your effects are applied changes the result. And that kind of makes sense. Imagine if you crushed out some of the shadow detail in one effect and then lifted all of the brightness in another, the shadow detail would be gone. If you want to change the order in which effects are applied, just drag and drop them on the list and that will change the order. And this is a prime example. Because the soft focus adds a white glow to the output, Changing it around so that it comes before the color correction changes the interpretation of the look. If I think this is a magic combination look for my film, I can lasso to select both of these, right click, save as current user preset. If I go to my effects list, that's going to pop up, soft focus plus three way color correction. I can always right click and change the name. So I'll call this uh, Maxim likes this look. That works for me. And of course, I can apply it also to other clips on the timeline. Let's just drag that on there. If I want to remove an effect that I've applied, I just click and drag until I see the trash can and let go. It's done. If I just undo that, I can also do the same thing by clicking on the cross, the top right hand corner of this panel. So that's really all you need to know to add effects, get into the settings for them and to remove them again and change the order around. Just so that you're familiar with the type effects available in Edius. Here we've got system presets. There's a few, not a huge amount, but they give you some looks like sepia. These can be combined really nicely with things like the old movie film effect. And I've seen some pretty corny examples of old movie effects, but I have to say this one's pretty convincing and 
I've shown some media using this effect combined with or intercut with 16mm telecined media and persuaded at least one very old school film camera operator that it was consistently the same media, but it wasn't. It was DV intercut with 16mm uh, telecine. So there's quite a lot you can do with it. Looking at this list here, there's some pretty wonderful effects, but notice that the keyers, which is for chroma key, for making parts of the picture transparent based on the color, luma key, 3D picture in picture, to be honest, I think this might be superseded by the layouter, regular 2D picture in picture. These are all under the keyers category. We've also got a track map, which allows you to put one piece of video behind another and to use it to define which parts of the upper video are visible and which parts aren't. Give it a go. Blend modes are just like Photoshop. Put one of these on a piece of video, lay it in front of something else, and you'll get a magic combination based on these standard rules. If you do a quick search on the internet, you'll find lovely descriptions of each of these kind of industry standard blending modes for layered video. So there you go. That's all you need to know to put effects on, change the settings, and get them back off again.